this. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see we've got Ben in Tallahassee. Ben, if you don't mind holding, I'll be right. Oh, uh, we've got time. Hi, Ben. Basil, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. So two things. Um, first one is I know you don't talk too much about the 50 day because you got your own uh, techniques and, and which are pretty amazing in itself with the nine and the 14. But if, if, if memory serves me right, looking at a lot of charts over the weekend as well, if you pull up the um, Dow on yep. a 50 day weekly, I believe that extended quite a long time and held that where they, where they had several three or four touch points. Is that correct? So the 50 moving average on my daily comes in right on I'm the sorry, daily. On the, on the week, weekly. On the I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there right now. I've already got it on the daily. Oh, so I just okay. want to show 25,866. Now I'm going to put it in the weekly. Let me just do this right now. Insert indicator might even be there. No, I think I took it off. I didn't want to make it too messy. And now we're going to go to moving averages. And we're going to go to indicator right there. Exponential, click. And now I'm going to change that to a 50. And I'm going to make it a dash line. I like to have them all do the same thing. Otherwise, they get very confusing. Make it a kind of a light gray. And the style is dash line. And here we go. Yep, there it is, a 24,720. So I'll be right back. We'll be back with Folks, we're back. We're back, and I'm not sure what happened, how that rectangle got in, and we get rid of it. Yeah, so we're back, and we're on with Ben and Tallahassee. So, Ben, I've got this. I made it a big, thick pink line, and I've still got all my notations, so it doesn't look that clear. So let me do this. It'll take me one second to do I'm going to go right here. I believe I've got a weekly chart sitting just waiting for me right here. Yep, I do. There it is. And uh, well, that's not going to help me either. <laughs> All right. So you've got a question. Well, let's see. What's the question? Yeah, I, I thought there were several points where it actually touched that over the past 12 it to actually hasn't, months. It, it hasn't. It's gone right mistaken. to it. And I've got this dash gray line, which really shows that if that line goes, then that pink 50 period moving average of 24,721 is going to be really important. And there are so many things that says 25,000 is really important to hold. You've got the 200 period moving average just below that. It's a round number. We've been there once before and bounced above it. So the dashed line comes in at about, it depends on when, but it comes in at about 25,000. But the uh, 50 period moving average and I'll do it this way. I'm going to scroll, and you'll yeah, see that it's my, really quite my, far. My question was, um, it, you know, do you see the same approximate level? You know, although I'm, I'm pulling up a different um, time frame and a different uh, um, exponential moving average, you know, do you kind of see roughly the same trigger point where, where it could certainly send the market a whole other level down? I absolutely. So this is what I'm looking at. When I'm looking at this particular chart, you'll see that I've drawn in this rectangle formation and it goes down to the lows of the 23,300s. My suspicion is that in this particular move uh, that we're looking at as we speak, if there is a rebound, it better come in within the next day or so, because if it doesn't, there's a very good chance we will take out very easily the low that was made three weeks ago of 24,899. Uh, that was the week of the 12th of October. And if we do that, that will automatically take out the gray dash line. If we close below that, that 24,720 level is just waiting. That's the 50 period moving average. One of the reasons I remember now very distinctly, I had it on for a while. I like to put on when people tell me that such and such a moving average is important. I never dismiss things. I always say, okay, let me give it a try. And if I find it just doesn't do anything for me, I just get rid of it. And I think I found that on the daily, it had a little bit more import than it did on the weekly chart. And on the monthly chart, I have other tools that seem to work even better. So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to say, um, let's see, make it disable. I'll just, I'll keep it there, but I'll disable it on this particular chart. But I'm just looking at other things, and it's that rectangle. The flag, let me just talk about this. The flag pole that was formed from 26,616 in January in the weekly chart, January the 26th, 
that high, peak E in a Chapman Wave 5 in the uh, Chapman Wave methodology, slumping to 23,360 with that particular candle in the month here, the Chapman Wave Roman candle, with an arch formation test from 25,800 down to a slightly lower low of 23,344, then landed up rallying to a point where the nine period moving average and the 14 period moving average kept becoming very strong support levels for a rally towards in the rectangle formation close to exactly on or just above the all time high. That's the, what we call the flagpole going to 26,616, going to 26,951. That's not just a, a hair, it, it's, it's quite a bit over. And once it closed above and all the rest closes underneath, and that says to me that there's a real good chance that even if I did a one-to-one -one relationship between the 3,000-point decline in January to early February, 3,000 points from 26,951 still takes you to the 23,900 level. So I'm suspecting that we will test 24,000, and it will probably be fairly soon. And if we don't, then this trend line right here at 25,000 is going to have to be like a, a trampoline, like a, like a trigger. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what news could it be? Because even if there's good news on one front, at this, most presidents are able to attack one or two issues, big issues in their, in their, the lifespan of their presidential cycle and do it pretty well. Um, to be tackling, I mean, Trump is tackling almost anything that comes in front of him. That is really tough to do. So the big picture is that he has been solely responsible because it's now his opportunity to take the uh, the the uh, the pleasure of being Mr. Stock Market President. And he went from uh, right there. That was in uh, November. He went from the low of what was it eight uh, right there. So that goes from November the 16th. It was around about 15,500, and it takes off, and it goes to 26,951. Same president who was, can take responsibility for the bull phase has to also take responsibility now yeah. for this consolidation. And that actually that actually lends itself well to my second question. So I, yes. I'm I'm glad we're in sync with that. Um, because I believe you're still expecting a coda phase run up, correct? I'm and, expecting and, another phase going so, to. Yes. And if so, um, could you could you remind us? Is it based on your monthly charts that 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 give you that inclination to continue to to think there's a, a strong coda phase ahead? There there are three angles to the whole thing. Number one is. I'm looking at this as if it's a very big Beethoven piece. And in Beethoven pieces, when he gets to that final movement, um, uh, anything can happen because the coda sometimes can be as long as at least half of the, the movement itself. And we are looking at this big extent. Why do I call it a coda phase? Because my inclination still is to say that when this completes, when this big major bull market completes, we're going to have a very difficult time politically, economically, socioeconomically, and in other ways that I don't even want to get into now. And the icon for me, and we still haven't seen it, is to be naming the tallest. I don't think we can do anything like uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the building that's going up. Um, I think Burj, Burj Khalafi is the... Uh, tallest building in the world right now. Now they've got the new one. And I don't think uh, we're going to uh, be able to even talk about a mile high building here in the United States, but it'll be the biggest in the United States. So I still think that's coming. Boston, I mean, we're going to, I'm, we're about to go through a, a, an upheaval, I think, in the uh, real estate area. Um, we've got at least now the nine buildings, major buildings going to be put up in Boston. And each one is going to be pretty, pretty big a skyscraper type building in Boston. We're not the skyscraper city, but we've got some pretty tall buildings. So this whole thing uh, to do with fashion, to do with, um, it, it has to do with everything from tattoos to, um, what? Did, oh, I had an email from someone over the weekend, a 500,000, a five, what was it? A 500,000 Rolls Royce SUV is about to be uh, delivered. So um, this is all going towards this, climactic moment. But I think what's going to happen is we have to have this digestive phase first so that we can reestablish 
what sectors and what stocks will be there. But my concern is that we might be looking at a lot more time in this consolidation mm -hmm. than many people think. And that's why I'm saying be Good. careful, be a little cautious. Good. Basil, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Always Have grateful. A great day. Ben Intanasi and